What's your why? Why do you wake up in the morning? Was that some of your best motivation might come wrapped in sandpaper. Some of your best inspiration comes with some pricks and some nails and some thorns around it. Some of your best inspiration came in an experience that you didn't ask for, you didn't want, and you'd never want to have again. Some of your best inspiration, some of the very thing that's fueled your soul to get you here, came in an experience that you dare not wish on your enemy. The reason why you don't give 120% is you ain't got a why for what you do. One thing I can't, I can't give you ambition. I can't make you want something, right? I can't want it for you. But once you want something, now you plug into something very real. You start putting all this stuff together and it's like, okay, essentially everything falls on my shoulders. If, if I want to be great, it's all down to me and whether I execute on that or not. It's all down to my ability to say, this is the thing I want. This is the gap and skill set between who I am today and who I need to become. Rather than accept personal accountability for why things didn't work out or, or maybe a relationship didn't work out or, or a job or whatever, we often point the finger. Um, and you'll see that it's very common in, in today's society. Um, I've even caught myself at sometimes. When things didn't happen, I'll, you maybe you want to mentally you know, point the finger at someone else, or this is why this didn't happen. And I have to catch myself and, and, and reassign blame because the minute you're deflecting, the minute you're, you're redirecting someone else's direction, all, all you've done is, is mask a, an, an insecurity in yourself and you've taken a fear of, of the realization that the shortcomings lied with you and, and try to cover it up. And like I told you, that fear is like a, it's like a, a burning fire, a small fire. And the minute that you refuse to address it, all you're doing is you're putting wood on it, you're pouring gasoline. Thoughts become things is such a small part of the picture. It's actually a myth because it's your feelings and your emotions are what manifests. The universe is delivering your experience through how you feel. It's not the, the Tesla on the vision board, the idea of moving towards that. I mean, that's fantastic, but it's the feeling that Tesla will give you, that feeling that drops down into your heart space. And with that comes the emotional responsibility to guide your energy, that you can rise above fear, you can embrace love, and you can remember your power. And this is why it's so important that we don't push to the side however we're feeling and we lean into the wholeness of our experience. So when you blame somebody else or you make them responsible for how you're feeling, then you're actually disowning your power. You're handing over your energy to somebody else. You really have to set your mind to acquiring a certain set of skills with all the efficiency in the world that you can acquire those skills, first of all, uh, that anything is possible as long as you set your mind to it. And that the most, and this is probably the most important lesson that I learned, um, that what is working against you is your own mind. A good person will not take more from the table of life than they think they're worth or they think they deserve. And so you have this governor on your identity. So what happens is our, it's like a thermostat. Our lives get going, we start doing really well. If we're a 75 degreeer and our life gets to 85 and 90 degrees, unconsciously we go, we don't know we're doing it. We, we start to cool life back down to get it back to where we're comfortable. The reverse is also true. When things start to go really bad and you're broke and you're struggling, you find a way to heat your life back up to what you think you're worth and you deserve. So the way we alter our life is sure we got to alter our behavior and our relationships and our circumstances, but the only way it's permanent is that we alter that governor, that thermostat, and we start to believe we're worth 85 degrees of life, 95 degrees of life, 110 degrees of life. And there's ways we can alter that. Say, are you willing to just jump? Because when you do, and you're willing to spread your wings. And you're willing to do something and be something different. And you're willing to get to the edge. Knowing you might fall, but also knowing you might fly. Working out is not life. To me, it's not about the body. It's completely about the mind. When you're starting your day at 4.30 in the morning, whatever you do that, the rest of your day, no matter what happens, is a breeze. You've, t you've tackled the hardest part of your day. No matter what goes on, sometimes it's just showing up 
and being able to push yourself a little bit more than yesterday, it's called finding your heart. You know, when you find your heart every day, man, life is a lot better. You know, because what happens is you're, you're either the CEO of your life or you're going to be someone else. You're, you're going to be life's employee. And you access presence by bringing awareness to the present moment. It's that power of now. That's your most pivotal point of power. That's your direct access to the universe at all times. And the more present you can be, the more you can release any of the resistance that is holding you back energetically from allowing your desires to flow into your reality. is that you put yourself in circumstances that are demanding of you past what you think your capacity is and when you succeed at them, you build a new water line. You do, you, you throw yourself out there past where you're comfortable and you, and you do an 85 degrees behavior and you knock it out of the park and you go, <gasps> your brain starts to believe it repetitiously when you start doing that, you build a new line, now you're 85 degrees, that's number one. The second way though is association. If you're around people, whatever that endeavor is, if it's a sport you're in, or if it's a business, or your faith, or your peace, if you begin to associate with people who live in that space at a higher temperature than you, through association, you get heated up. Take the setbacks and turn them into valuable information. When you think within the growth mindset framework of developing your abilities over time, in the framework of who you are. All of us have unique things to contribute if we stick to what we're doing. Every day if you wake up, you don't take control of your day, and you don't dominate the day as best you can start to finish, life is gonna own you. You know, if you're waking up with a negative attitude, you have to be able to step back and self-assess, why am I in a bad mood? And you have to work from that minute forward to build that tool in your belt, if you will, to be able to assess it, address it, apply it, if you will, and then move forward. If you can do that, I'll tell you, life gets exponentially easier and easier and easier every day. And before you know it, you're working with greater efficiency, more confidence, more determination, and you set yourself on a path to truly self-generate success. But more importantly, you're happy. Groundwork of beginning to build self-confidence is to begin to keep the promises you make to you. And that's why it's important to begin to even make small promises. You're gonna get up at a certain time in the morning. Not only do it, but then give yourself credit. Say, I did what I said I was gonna do. If you're constantly being influenced and moved by what other people think about you, it means there's a deficiency in what you think about you. The number one addiction in the world today is the addiction to other people's approval. And that's because we don't approve of ourselves. You don't have to allow yourself to be a victim, even if you've been victimized, right? Like, you can transcend that, and you can look back and go, what could I have done differently? Oh my gosh, I could have done all these things. Awesome, I'm now in control of it, right? Because being victimized is inevitable, but being a victim, that's a choice, right? It's like pain is inevitable, suffering is a choice. Remember that you have this incredible power of presence within you, then you empower yourself to create anything it is in your life that you desire.